All right, hello, welcome. We are going to try today to make a comprehensive review on the bones of the skull and the features that we uh, do need to then um, at least remember very quickly um, together uh, in this uh, review. Uh, as we talked in the lab, the skull is formed with several bones. We're going to start with the bone that you're looking at right now here which would be your frontal bone. I'm going to remove the cap for now so it doesn't keep falling. Um, the frontal bone will have a flat area that forms a, a good portion of your forehead. That would be the squama. Squama is surrounded by two elevations. The elevations would be the supraorbital ridge. Uh, you can see the elevations if I turn the skull sideways that will enable you to see the elevations here better. Um, the elevations, of course, would be uh, much stronger in uh, muscular uh, men or muscular person in general uh, rather than in a female skull. Um, you will also see uh, in between the two supraorbital ridge and uh, a little bit inferiorly would be an area we refer to typically as the glabella. And um, then inferiorly, then uh, the, the, the frontal bone would be articulating with two small bones here. That would be your nasal bones, nasal bones. If I turn the skull a little bit sideways, so it enables you to see um, uh, the medial wall of your orbital cavity, um, then you will realize that the medial wall has um, a small um, bone here um, which we call the lacrimal bone lacrimal bone and the lacrimal bone will have the lacrimal fossa uh, posterior and two over there um, there should be a canal here but unfortunately this particular model doesn't have the canal and that would be where your lacrimal canal and lacrimal duct going from uh, your um, the canaliculi and the conjunctival sac to the nose. Um, let's go back to the frontal bone. We agreed that the frontal bone will make uh, the roof of your um, orbital cavity. Um, there is a, an important structure, a couple of structures here, and the frontal bone we need to cover before we move forward. We will have the supraorbital margin and right here we have well, what we call supraorbital foramen, one on each side, of course. The frontal bone will give uh, a process um, inferiorly that would communicate with the zygomatic bone, and therefore we call that process zygomatic process of the frontal bone. If I look at the bones that make the most of our face, uh, would be one on each side that would be your maxillary bone or maxilla. The maxillary bone will have a part that is associated with uh, your nose and giving the shape of the bony bridge of your nose and will also give a portion of the bony part of your nose. Um, then will make the face, um, the shape of the face is um, characteristically dependent on the maxillary bone. Um, then we have the, what we call the alveolar margin, where the teeth will be attaching themselves in a special kind of joint we refer to in the lecture as gomphosis, which, which is one type of synarthrosis, those joints that don't move. Um, synarthrosis is also the, uh, is the type of joint you saw in the sutures between the bones, it's uh, it's also an uh, immovable, immobile um, joint that uh, where the bones are linked together by short uh, fibrous um, connective tissue. Um, as I said earlier, there is a, an important structure here where I'm putting my probe. That would be your infraorbital um, foramen. Um, the Maxillary bone um, is um, will make a, a good portion of uh, the floor of your orbital cavity. Um, if I look at the nose and the nasal cavity, 
we will see two shelves here. One is uh, superior and or, or one is upper and one is lower. Uh, the lower one would be your in, uh, your inferior me, uh, inferior nasal concha, and that's a bone on itself. Um, then above that, then we would have the middle nasal concha and the superior nasal concha. We can't see because um, it's going to be buried um, behind these structures. Um, the superior and the middle um, nasal conchae are part of the ethmoid bone, which we will get. Uh, into it later, uh, whereas the inferior nasal concha is a bone on its own. Um, if I turn the skull sideways to show you um, some of the structures that are in the within the orbital cavity, as we agreed, we will have the lacrimal bone, and the lacrimal bone should have um, a lacrimal canal. Um, leading from it, from the lacrimal fossa, but unfortunately not in this particular model. That brings us to other um, structures here. As I said, the superior and the uh, inferior and middle nasal concha, or conchi for plural. Uh, we're going to have uh, the nasal septum here is mainly made by um, a bone called the vomer bone. Uh, that articulates with a descending bone coming from the ethmoid, we agreed to call that other bone perpendicular plate of ethmoid. If I flip the skull sideways to show you this bone, which also forms your uh, inferior margin of your orbital cavity, that is your zygomatic bone. So the zygomatic bone is going to send what we call a maxillary process, to the maxillary bone or the maxilla and will also send a posterior uh, process right here to articulate with the coming uh, process from the temporal bone. We will get to that when we look at the temporal bone. At the same time, the zygomatic bone will give rise to a process here superiorly that would articulate with your frontal bone. Um, the zygomatic bone will make uh, a good portion of the lateral wall of your um, orbital cavity. Um, over here we will see two muscles uh, can originate from um, the zygomatic bone and that would be zygomaticus major and minor and we will get into that when we discuss the muscles. I'm going to now um, turn the skull sideways so I can show you uh, more uh, structures um, that uh, we need to remember. I'm going to put this back so to um, get the, the whole figure um, of the skull. Uh, we are now turning um, to the sideway. Allow me to adjust the camera a little bit. Um, we are um, looking mainly here at uh, your temporal bone uh, which articulates at what we call squamous it's another flat area therefore it's your squamous suture with your parietal bones here this is still your frontal uh, bone in the front this big muscle here that um, originates at this part uh, would be your uh, temporalis muscle that's very important for the chewing and this um, uh, supplied by um, the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve. Um, in some skulls you will see it, some others you want, that we have um, uh, a line here, an ele elevation uh, in the bone, uh, and the parietal bone, um, that would be um, your superior and inferior temporal lines. It's not always um, clear, it depends how strong as this muscle to pull on the attachment uh, at the bone to make an elevation or a ridge in it. Um, the muscle with uh, lots of um, complicated structure would be your um, temporal bone, however. We will get to the parietal bone in a minute, but the temporal bone will uh, would be this guy here, and uh, it would have um, articulation again in another suture articulation here it's called squamous suture with your um, parietal bone 
and um, it will give you uh, a nice long process here towards the zygomatic process that would be your, the zygomatic process of the temporal bone and together with the temporal bone uh, I'm sorry together with the zygomatic bone it would form to you what we refer to as the zygomatic arch um, by the way from the zygomatic arch here from the inferior margin of the zygomatic arch you will have a very important muscle mastication it's called the masseter or the masseter muscle and we'll get into that when we talk about our muscles um, the temporal bone back to it it will have um, articulating um, fossa for the uh, mandibular condyloid process so that would be the condyl condyloid fossa or the mandibular fossa uh, it would give you a process as we agree to the zygomatic bone that would be your zygomatic uh, process um, it would have um, a dead end um, cavity here or um, what we call meatus and that's your external acoustic meatus that's part of your um, ear of course that's the middle ear and then inside will be the inner ear um, that of course doesn't show all the way it's supposed to be a little deeper than that but this is where your external auditory uh, or acoustic meatus is supposed to be uh, right here we have um, uh, uh, strong elevation in the bone, in the temporal bone, um, making a process that looks like a mountain or a nipple um, pointing downward. And that would be your mastoid process, mastoid process. And as you can see, several muscles are attaching themselves into the mastoid uh, process as indicated with those um, blue lines you see on our model. Um, some of them are um, the sternocleidomastoid and um, the splenius capitis is also attached to our um, mastoid process. Um, all of these structures are part of your temporal bone and we will see even more when we flip the skull uh, upside down. But before we move on to the occipital bone, Let's address one more uh, structure that you see here, which is the one that looks like a stylus pen here. Uh, it's a process, and uh, we will call that styloid process. Styloid process. All right? So then we turn back, and at this point, I probably will take um, the, the cap off right after I show you where the boundaries of the occipital bone because the occipital bone would make um, a, a suture again here that we refer to as lambdoid suture because it looks like lambda. Um, so that's what I needed to show you with this guy. And uh, then I'm turning to the skull to show you um, the posterior aspect of the skull and or the occipital bone. Occipital bone will have very important structure here where the ligamentum nuchi will attach that will be your external occipital protuberance then we have two lines elevations in your occipital bone um, those we refer to as um, you can probably see them over um, over here they will be um, radiating out from your external occipital protuberance and we will call them superior and inferior nuchal line. Superior and inferior nuchal line. So that was your occipital bone before we start uh, showing the structures at the bottom of the skull. Um, we are still with the occipital bone and we agreed that this is our uh, external occipital protuberance and here again we have our superior and inferior nuchal lines. Um, we will see quite a large cavity um, in the occipital bone that passes your um, medulla oblongata, which continues inferiorly as your spinal cord, um, that we will call foramen magnum. Um, on each side, anterior uh, laterally to your um, foramen magnum you will have a um, condyloid process or occipital condyles one on each side those are the guys that 
articulate with your atlas bone, which is your first um, vertebra, first cervical vertebra. Anterior to uh, your condyles, uh, you will see a canal that I can um, put the probe in, and that will be your hypoglossal canal. So the canal that runs um, right under your uh, condyle, occipital condyles, that would be your hypoglossal canal. Uh, other structures we need to um, observe um, is um, in the occipital bone, we will see a tubercle here, and that is your pharyngeal tubercle, your pharyngeal tubercle that is in the anterior portion here of your occipital bone. Um, this would be, I, I hope I can take this without messing it up. No, it's very difficult to take it out, so we will just leave it in place. That was your occipital bone. And um, we're going to move now to identify some of the very unique structures and foramens you have at the base of the skull. Uh, we already talked about the uh, hypoglossal canal. Uh, we will have, uh, right here, we will have uh, two foramens uh, next to each other. That would be your jugular and your um, carotid uh, foramens. Uh, if we go anteriorly, we will see uh, a lacerated, uh, where am I? Um, it's very hard to um, shoot and uh, talk at the same time. Uh, we will see almost a lacerated uh, foramen. Um, it doesn't show much laceration in this particular model, but if you hold uh, a true skull, you will see it much better than that. And that, of course, will be your foramen lacerum, foramen lacerum. Uh, lateral to it, you will see an oval foramen, because it's oval, we refer to as a foramen oval, and uh, behind the foramen oval, we will have a foramen here called foramen um, spinosum. So foramen oval and foramen spinosum. Uh, let me see if I can get that. Okay, let's see here. Maybe I can. All right. um, one more time. So here our foramen oval is right here, and behind it will be our foramen um, spinosum. Um, this guy here would be your foramen lacerum. Um, those uh, processes were uh, a good part of them where um, in the sphenoid bone, and we will get into the sphenoid bone, but the posterior portion here was uh, also in your uh, temporal bone, where you will see also uh, the styloid process, which we talked about earlier. Uh, this is your styloid process. Several muscles come from the styloid process, like uh, styloglossus muscle and stylohyoid muscle. Uh, we will have a foramen, Excuse me, between the styloid process and the mastoid process, that would be stylomastoid foramen. That's a very important place where your facial nerve uh, comes out from uh, the cranial cavity. Um, let's keep moving and we will start addressing now um, uh, the sphenoid bone, at least part of it, the part that we see uh, from this end and that would be the trigoid process. The trigoid process will have medial and lateral um, trigoid plates. This is still the vomer, part of the vomer, from the posterior uh, angle that you are looking at over here. And uh, like I said before, it articulates with um, a plate that's coming inferiorly, and you can see the ethmoid bone here and that would be your perpendicular plate of ethmoid, which articulates with the vomer to make your uh, nasal septum, the bony nasal septum. Uh, we can't uh, see much of the palate in this particular model, but um, the bony palate is made by, um, anteriorly by the maxilla or the maxillary bone, and you will see way anteriorly right behind 
the incisive teeth will be incisive foramen and uh, if we go posteriorly we will have two tiny bones here these were, would be your palatine bones um, this would be the palatine process of the maxillary bone in the palatine bone we will have two foramina uh, one is larger than the other the large one will be your uh, greater palatine foramen and the small one would be your lesser palatine foramen all right so now we will go to the inside of the skull to discuss very important features here that uh, I'm, I'm hoping that you all will remember um, this here is still the frontal bone as we agree that it's making the roof of your um, orbital cavity um, this bone here would be your um, ethmoid bone has two features that we see here that we uh, do need to um, address and we do need to remember them um, we will see um, a, a plate that, that has uh, lots of uh, holes in it and that we call the cribriform plate of ethmoid where the olfactory branches of the olfactory nerves or olfactory nerve will penetrate through the um, the cribriform plate of ethmoid and to get to the nasal cavity and uh, we will see a crest or an elevation here also on the ethmoid bone and we'll call that cresta galli um, if we go posteriorly then we will be addressing this very important bone that looks like a butterfly more or less uh, here would be the lesser wing and the greater wing would be uh, down there uh, that would be our um, our sphenoid bone our sphenoid bone so here is our smaller wing and then the greater wing would be underneath um, in this lesser wing of the sphenoid bone uh, we will have um, anterior clinoid process and since we have anterior clinoid process there will be a posterior clinoid process um, this part here we refer to as the cella torsica and the cella torsica has a hypophyseal fossa where your pituitary gland is resting here and it's, uh, it's also the place where the optic nerve from each eye here is the optic canal uh, the optic nerve from each eye will intersect and will make the optic chiasma that's why people who have uh, tumor in their pituitary gland will um, will have uh, symptoms of blurry vision and uh, diplopia which they see double um, that is your optic canal um, we're still in the sphenoid bone and we will have another foramen here that would be your foramen rotundum and then before we address the greater wing of the sphenoid bone um, those are the same um, foramens we saw from underneath that would be your oval one that's foramen oval and that is the one behind it we call that foramen spinosum and this of course is our foramen lacerum um, these are the features that I wanted to share with you in the skull I hope this review will help you uh, to remember um, uh, the very characteristic and important features uh, of your skull and now we move into our uh, muscles of the head and neck in our next video. I'll see you there.